Residencies have always been really uh, a really special part of my practice. Uh, I started doing residencies here in, in the Bay Area at South Bay, Los Gatos, Saratoga, at Villa Montalvo back in 1997. And I've done other residencies at McDowell Colony in New Hampshire. And then I recently had this residency at the space program at the end of 2021, where I made a series of screen printed editions as a 20th anniversary celebration of some drawings that I did in 2001, 2002. And I just really wanted to bring those back to life, get people to see those who had never seen them and just to really celebrate those. So once I got those printed, once we had that done, it was just a matter of finding a place to show them. And that's how this whole residency came about. And it just, it worked out so perfectly because we had an exhibition space on the ground floor and then I could live and work up here in this amazing attic, in you know, this historical building right on the corner of Haight and Ashbury. And just be up here and listen to music on Norm's old sound system and it's a really magical place to be and it's an experience that I feel like is priceless. So yeah, I was born in Shreveport, Louisiana in 1963 and my family moved to Livermore, California when I was about three years old. So I grew up there and went to high school there and my parents used to take me into the city when I was a kid and it was always a really magical place to me. It was always like, you know, the, the lights the, at night and, you know, the people and the buildings and that really impressed me. So uh, it turned me on to cities when I was a kid. And so when I was going to art school, I, I wanted to get away from home. San Francisco seemed too close. LA was just right, New York was too far. So I went to school at Otis Art Institute in LA in the, and I lived in LA in the 80s. Moved to New York uh, in 91 and I was there for about 17 years and then moved back to LA. So, um, so coming back here and really spending some time in San Francisco has been just incredible for me because I, I've really never spent this much time in San Francisco all at once, you know, for this amount of time. And especially not in this neighborhood here in the Haight, um, which is so, I'm really, really, really blown away by how great it is, the vibe and the people and the energy. That's all been really important, I think, for me, especially right now, especially like coming back out of the lockdown and the whole thing where we're all getting out a little bit more, still trying to be careful, but getting out and doing things again, seeing people. I've met so many amazing people just here and it's been, I think, a really valuable experience, not only to be up here working, but also to be in the gallery, interacting with the community, the locals as well as the tourists and, and everybody really seems to appreciate having something like that gallery on this block in this neighborhood as opposed to what you might normally find which you know caters more to the tourists. The drawings that I have on display in the gallery or the prints that were made from the drawings those original drawings were really important uh, to me in the development of my career and just like a real breakthrough for me. They're all based on 18th century French decorative arts that I use as a structure within which just to improvise my own kind of biomorphic cartoon abstraction as well as incorporating found imagery from a lot of different sources. But one of the sources that I've uh, sort of always sort of looked back to and one of the things that was really an influence was underground comics. And that was all born right here in this neighborhood, in this city. So um, that's a real, interesting sort of circle and when I came here to do some work up here in the attic the idea was to sort of see where my history and my work intersects with the history of this neighborhood and so I the first thing I thought was underground comics and when I was passing by one of the shops downstairs there was a t-shirt with R. Crumb's stoned again image on it which was nine panels uh, of a guy getting more and more high until his face sort of melted. Um, so I thought, oh, that's so perfect. The last panel of that, which you can see here, um, that is, it, it was just right up my alley. The forms and shapes in Crumb's drawing just said, okay, perfect. So that's kind of the genesis of that.
And this piece is based on something that I kept seeing while I was living here. It was uh, from a print that's right downstairs, right across from the bathroom. It's a Piranesi print um, that depicts all kinds of artifacts from ancient Rome. And I kept seeing this one and it looked like, it reminded me of Norman Larson who had the big beard. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's one of the reasons he had that print. There's so many paintings of Norm around. But, um, so I, I thought, okay, that's perfect. I'm gonna take that and use that as my structure. Kind of, once again, within which to improvise all my kind of psychedelic biomorphic uh, line work kind of stream of consciousness, uh, but yeah, using that as a basic structure to start with. This has been an invaluable experience for me, just being able to be here, and, and it's, it's such a pleasure and a privilege, and I'd really love to thank SF Heritage for making this whole thing happen. I think it's really important for artists, I think it's important for the neighborhood and, the, and just to bring life to the building. I'd also like to thank Peter McQuaid for making this all happen. Just sort of connecting all the dots uh, would not have happened without him. And yeah, it's, I thank the, the neighborhood and everyone that's worked on the show. There's been a great support system and everyone has been just such a pleasure to work with.